will Sapnap become the first six-time winner? All right, everyone, welcome to a new segment called Convince Lockie. Welcome to the pre-show. My name is Stein. My name is Ix. I'm Mystery. And I'm Lockie. And this is the MCC 22 pre-show. So we're going to get through all of the teams and talk about their keys to victory. So I'll start off with the red team. The red rabbits are going to be one of the top PVP forces in this event. Dream, George, and Sam have PVP experience from Manhunts, and Captain Puppy has also shown some great combat skills. This is also a scary group in Sands of Time, and Dream and George have lots of potential in Parkour Tag. However, this team may want to avoid a late build mark. If you're looking for a terrifying team, however, the Orange Ocelots is that team. They're absolutely insane at Rocket Spleef Rush, and hold their own in Sands of Time and Parkour Tag, making them a solid team to watch. If they manage to skip Sky Battle, Orange have a very good shot at Dodgeball. Moving on to the Yellow Yaks, or should I say, the Golden Gals. This team is definitely looking to prove that experience doesn't matter, seeing as Sylvie is the only one on the team who has already played in more than three events. This is a rather strong team if you look at their previous events, especially in movement games. If they can play to get to the other side and parkour tag late, they could be a frontrunner for dodgebolt. The Lime Lam is a one to watch when it comes to your team-based games like Build Mart and Grid Runners. Communication won't be an issue, and neither will movement games like Ace Race, especially when they've got Quig and Stamija leading the way. The green team is very uncertain statistically since they have two new players, however, it may be wise for them to get PvP games late where Sapnap can really shine. They probably want to avoid Ace Race late though, since it's often confusing for rookies, and Michael isn't the biggest fan of the game. Turbo's, on Turbo's house, not on my fucking tail! No! <laughs> on the Cyan team, once again we see a team hoping to get Rambu his first ever win. As an all-around strong team, Cyan excels in Hole in the Wall, Battle Box, and Ace Race, but also don't really have a particular game which drags them down like many other teams. With some good momentum, Cyan could very easily win it all. The Aqua Axolotls are one of the most beloved teams in the community, as they spawn with the Hermits, never get sold. Now, after Buildmart was ruthlessly skipped last event, they'll definitely want some redemption by making it the finale, which, if they're able to pull off with some help from H-Bomb taking the lead, could definitely get them into Dodge Bolt. The blue bats are all about PvP. Battle box, sky battle, survival games, you name it, they'll fight it. Their concerns, however, might lie within movement games like to get to the other side, unless Tapple can convince Nox crew to have them play walls six times over. The purple team has puns leading a group that mostly specializes in team games. Shovel, Gemini Tay, and Cubfan have all had success in games like Build Mart and Sands of Time. They are also a fairly good survival games team and might want it as a late game. Battle Box and To Get to the Other Side are weaker games for them though. And finally, we have the Pink Parrots, a team where Captain Sparkles supervises two chaotic teenagers and one equally chaotic adult. Though they definitely want to avoid Build Mart and Rocket Spleef as some of their weaker games, if they manage to play To Get to the Other Side, Sky Battle, and Parkour Tag late, they could finally get the Captain his first ever win and break the curse. And that is all 10 teams and what each of them need to do if they want to win MCC. So now we're going to talk about the three new players that are coming into MCC 22. Welcome to the newcomers segment. In this section, we're going to look at these three new players this event. Mystery, would you like to start us off with Blushy? I would love nothing more. Blushy is a streamer known for playing lots of Bedwars. She does it practically every day. She's very good at it and very good at movement specifically. And she also has a lot of experience in playing in a lot of different Minecraft streamer events, including MCC. That's right, she's been in MCC Rising and MCC All-Stars already. One game she did amazing in is to get to the other side, including an incredible extension in MCC Rising. I think going forward to get to the other side in a canon MCC could be your game. What do you think, X? I would definitely agree with you. All right, well, who's up next, X? Up next, we have Tina Kitten. Uh, our second newcomer is from the Green Geckos and is a member of the esports organization 100 Thieves. Tina is a variety streamer whose main Minecraft experience has come from playing on the offline TV modded server, though she's also a member of the Dream SMP and has played in a few Minecraft Twitch Rivals events before. Um, she's not really that much of a Minecrafter, but in terms of what she might be strong at, PvP games are often a lot easier for newcomers to quickly pick up, um, and Grid Runners could also be a really good game, considering that she knows her team members pretty well. What do you What do you think, Mystery? I 100% agree that team games is good for them, partially because of the next newcomer, which is Foolish Gamers. He's just admiring himself. He is a streamer who is on a Dream SMP. He spends a lot of time on there, as specifically part of Lost Nevadas, but he's also known for being a great builder. It's something he's good at, and he's also played in Twitch Rivals before. So lots of experience. I think Build Mart is honestly a really good option for him because he's a builder. Like we said, he knows the people on his team well, 
And I just think they would maybe have some really good chemistry in that game. But X, I want to know what you think. Um, I'm not sure if Build Mart will be his strongest game. Gas. You definitely get some advantages for being a builder if you play Build Mart. Like, you know, crafting recipes. But beyond that, it does just come down to comps. I actually think one of his better games, if he makes it there, will be Dodgeball. I've watched a few videos of him in Twitch Rivals, and he is not bad with a bow, to say the least. So I could see that being something he does very well in. Makes sense, makes sense. If only he gets there. Anyway, those are the three newcomers. Let us know what you think of them. But we're moving on to our next segment. You know it, you love it. It's this or that. Welcome to this or that. Me and Lockie are going to look at five different prompts and decide which answer we think is more appropriate. So our first question, let's see, we got Sapnap. Will Sapnap become the first six time winner? Now, while my answer technically to this is no, I will say that I think Sapnap's team is going to do much better than expected. A lot of people are predicting 9th or 10th. I think this team could end up getting top half. I, I, I think we should maybe have variety in the winners, but though if we're going to go off the this or that prediction, I'm going to be honest, the odds are probably in Sapnap's favor to get yet another win. That seems to be the trend recently, so I'm, I'm going to have to go with yes. I think he'll do it. <laughs> All right, next prompt. Will there be a new remixed game in MCC 22? Ooh, see, oh, I'd hope so. I'm gonna go with yes, yes. Yes, I'd hope so, because we had obviously the remixed Battle Box last time, and I actually really enjoyed that. So I'm keeping a hope out in this one. There's gonna be a, a new one, and I'm, I'm excited for what it is. So I wanna go yes. What are you about, you, Stein? I'm actually gonna agree with this one. I think people really liked the remixed Battle Box that happened last time, and this is something that Nox Crew intends to do as a kind of a recurring thing. Let's look at the third prawn. Oh, will Ace Race come back with a new map? Okay, so we haven't gotten a new Ace Race map in quite some time. Ace Race has taken a break since they put it out of rotation for the last MCC. I think they might have used that time to maybe create a new map for it. And I'd personally be very excited to see a new map. Ooh, see, I like every point that you've raised there, Stein. But I'm gonna disagree with you for the sake of disagreeing with you. Don't think that Ace Race will be back with a new map. It might be back. I don't know if it'll be a new map. And, and I, I really have no basis to this prediction. I, I just want to disagree with you. Anyway, what's next? Will there be any newcomers in the top 15? Yes, absolutely. I mean, Blushy is one of the newcomers, so... You know, I'm, I'm a bit loyal to the Golden Gals, so I, I mean, I have faith. I really think, yes, that she, she's going to pull it off. I think this one's actually going to be rather close. I, mean, I think it really comes down to Blushy, whether she can do it. And I think just barely, yes, I think she will be able to do it. All right, our final prompt is Captain Sparkles going to get third place. It's going to be a strange team. And, and who knows, maybe they come together and maybe they do amazing and clutch up as a team and win the whole thing. Maybe, and maybe they get third, who knows. But if I had to guess, I think they're gonna struggle a bit to find some cohesion, and they'll, they'll end up at a lower placement, probably bottom half, and if I had to guess. I think my prediction of whether they're gonna come third or not comes down to whether they play Sky Battle in the first half or the second half. If Sky Battle's played in the first half, they're not gonna do well. They'll be towards the bottom of the leaderboard. If <laughs> Sky Battle's played in the second half, they will be up the leaderboard, and obviously Captain Sparkles can't get into Dodgebolt, so third yeah if sky battle is played in the second half i'm gonna go with third and what if sky battle is never played oh no i have not thought this through oh dear <laughs> well in order to not think let's just end this or that thank you for watching this fantastic segment whilst i start having a breakdown about predictions let's take it back to the main desk for our individual predictions it's time to talk about our individual predictions my third place prediction i think quig has been doing individually very well in season two i don't expect him to stop especially since the team behind him is very strong and it's got lots of potential and in second place i would predict pete to make a comeback with another very well-rounded team they're going to excel in communication and mechanics. Pete's going to have a great path to the top three, I think. But my first place prediction, I think I'm going with Dream. I believe that with Sapnap on a weaker team, Dream's going to be able to rise into the spotlight, bringing the same drive that Sapnap has had recently. Now, speaking of Sapnap, I actually have him as my Dark Horse player. I think that even with a team that looks very weak on paper, he will still be able to perform very well and could easily get into the top five individual. For my third place pick, I have purpled last MCC, he really proved his incredible strength. Even without his best game to get to the other side, another top three performance seems likely to cement purple as an S tier player to me. Uh, in second place, I have Pizza Hut last event. He placed 12th on a last place team, a really remarkable placement. On a strong team this event, Pete's got a chance to finally make it back into the top three for the first time since MCC 17. And finally, my number one player is the one, the only, Quig. 
Quick's team is strong in a wide variety of games, and as a jack of all trades himself, this plays perfectly to Quick's strengths. And finally, my dark horse is Captain Sparkles. We've seen him breaking into the low top 10 placements recently, and he only needs some energy from his remarkably chaotic team to get him up and into where I predict him, 6th place. For me, coming in third, I have none other than Snapnap. Unfortunately, I don't see his team doing so well this time, and the last time he was on a bottom half team, he actually got 8th individually, which is a bit low for him. But however, he's won the past 4 events he's been in, he's gotten top 5 in all of them, so no matter what, I think he's going to be unstoppable still. For second place, I've got Dream. Obviously, his last event wasn't too good as he came 16th individually. However, the last time he missed the top 10 was MCC 14, and what did he do in MCC 15? He bounced back with an amazing win. So while I'm not 100% sure that he's going to win this one, I definitely think this one could be some great redemption for him. However, first place for me has to also be Quaid. His previous performance, MCC 20, was nothing but dominant as he got second place. And this time, not only is he on a team with some of his friends, but they are a very good team in pretty much most of the category. And for my Dark Horse, I'm going with Wisp. Wisp is one of the better mechanical players in the event, but he's never really been able to consistently place that high. This time though, he's on one of the strongest teams in my opinion, being Cyan, and it's a team that's sort of a jack of all trades, with Wisp being the PvP expert. So I think this will boost all of Cyan's individual performances, including Wisp. This is his event. The theme song for Back to the Future was The Power of Love, so the theme song for MCC 22 will be The Power of Dream Not Found, as I predict Dream to get third place overall after climbing up the individual ladder again. The Quigstub will be in second place as he goes ham on his birthday, only still to be underrated by the entire MCC subreddit, that's very not quaggers. Anyway, in first place I've got Jojo. Jojo is gonna go go crazy as she will lead the Golden Gals to Dodgebolt through her first individual placement and begin her journey to becoming the first female S tier. Blushy is my Dark Horse player because X told me that she should be my Dark Horse player because apparently I'm like the only one with enough sense to put her in my top 10. It seems that there are two players that we kind of all agree are gonna place very highly, but we disagree on which one is gonna place higher out of the two. Quig and Dream curious to see what the Quig supporters have to say. Quig just has a really strong team this event that plays to his strengths. Quig is, as I said, a jack of all trades player who's able to do well in a lot of high coin games like Ace Race, uh, to get to the other side, Sky Battle, and I think that his team is really good in team games. Grid Runners, Build Mart, and Sands of Time, and so his team will be able to help drag him up above Dream this event. I personally, I think I'm going to stick by uh, saying that Dream's going to outplace Quake here because Dream has a certain level of leadership and competitive energy that I feel like Quig doesn't have quite as much of. So I think Dream is going to have a lot of the same main character energy that Sapnap's been having recently, and there's not going to be quite as many people to rival him in terms of just his will to win. If you know me, there's one thing I like to see. Consistency. Now... Obviously, I made the case that Dream, despite having a poor previous event, is going to bounce back this time, and I still believe it. Dream, I feel like, can be a, just a tad bit more inconsistent and quick at times because he sometimes has poor events. He sometimes has games that he's not as good at. I feel like Quig, just being the jack of all trades he is, is just more reliable in a general sense. I'm not saying either one of them is better than the other. I'm just saying I feel like if I can rely on one person, I mean, I think it would be Quig. Yeah. All three of you make some interesting cases, and obviously I also have Dream and Quig in my top three, so I can't really disagree with you. They're both great players, you know, one's consistent, one's a great singer, you know, they, they both really have a lot of skills that are really demonstrated well in MCC. They will take up the second and the third place on the podium, uh, making room for Jojo Solos. Yeah, that's what I thought. Girl power. Finger snap. Alright everyone, welcome to a new segment called Convince Locky. I'm not too sure what's going on here, but I'm assuming that people are going to have to convince me of things because I'm the most based on the pre-show. First up, we have Stein. What are you going to convince me of, buddy? I'm going to convince you that I think Red is going to be the team that ends up winning MCC. Here's my reasoning. So Sapnap has won the last three canon MCCs, and one of the main reasons is his competitive energy. And I think Dream is one of the only people in the event that is capable of rivaling this energy. I think that with this well-rounded team behind him, they'll be able to cruise to dodgebolt. And of course, Dream and George are two of the best dodgebolt players out there, and I don't think any team could do much against Red in the finals. Hmm, you see, 
As I stroke my hairless chin, I think, wow, what a bit of a cheap shot from Stein to try and win me over by, by going straight for my heart, you know, for George not found. It's gonna be hard for the others to try and live up to, to a, an argument of George winning MCC, which is very, very feasible and very, very likely. I'm interested, and we'll just have to see what the next people say. Ah, the one and only X, the guy who stole the position of moderator on the MCC subreddit from me. It's good to see you here, buddy. Yes, I'm here to argue, and I'm going to use the one thing that's stronger than George not found in Lockie's heart. I'm going to argue the Orange Ocelots are going to win using the power <gasps> of Pizza Hut. Yes. First off, Orange, just a broken Rocket Sleeve Rush team. In, in movement games in general, they don't have weaknesses. They're strong in Battle Box, they're strong in all the team games, and really, the only bad game for them is Sky Battle with a top 10 individual performance possible from Pete and from Joel, and Ryguy and Spifey being capable of making top 20, top 25, this team, I don't think they can be beat. I think they are going to be getting to dodgeball and winning. Ooh, wow, that was a that was a strong sell from you there. You sure you haven't been on t Shark Tank before with that kind of experience at trying to convince people? Gotta say, you raise a good point. I do love Pete, so that was... Man, you guys really just know know the way to my heart, don't you? I mean, it's either that or KFC. So, you're right. Orange really doesn't have any weaknesses. You know who else doesn't have weaknesses? Me. So, that that was also a good point there. But, you know, you did mention that Sky Battle could be their weakness, and you know that I do love Sky Battle. But it's never really played towards the end of the game. So, that could, that could go well for them. So, yeah, I'll definitely have to think over this. Don't tell Stein, but you're probably ahead of him right now. All right, mystery. Well, it's... Quite the mystery to see what you have to bring towards me. Obviously, you are the second biggest Wiggles fan I know after myself. So I'm I'm really am keen to see what you have to say. Go ahead. Lucky, what I have to say is about a certain team called the Cyan Coyotes. And I like to call this team Jack because they are a jack of all trades. You have CPK, who is a pretty good overall player, just around the board, does what he does. And he won the last event. He's ready to win another one. Then let's look at the other free players. Wisp. Amazing at PvP. If you showed it in so many games, especially Sky Battle, he'll do it again. You've also got Wilbur, great at team games, the number one team game player, some might say. I wonder who. And then we've also got Rambu. He's a great movement player. He's shown just amazing performances in Hole in the Wall and to get to the other side. And I think, overall, they'll have amazing chemistry. Why? Because Locky. Locky Locky. They're really funny. Wilbur and Rambu, comedic duo. Wisp. He's just funny. And CPK, you've never said anything negative about him before. So, this is the team to look out for. Lockie. I mean, you may be right in that I've never said anything negative about CPK, though I may have sung it. Um, yeah, you're trying to convince me here of, of, of Cyan, but the thing is, you gotta know your audience, man. I, I remember who's on Cyan, so off to a rocky start, I'll give you that much. You mentioned that the team is a jack of all trades, and, and my mind went to the jack playing card in a, in a casino, and I'm like, you know what? Gambling's pretty bad, but I, I do I do appreciate the occasional game of poker. Um, but you did manage to bring it home with Rambu because you know I I am a big fan of Rambu, and I love the faith that you have in him to perform well. And honestly, at the end of the day, you're right. They are funny. That's a great point. So thank you, Mystery, for your case. I will ponder my decision, and then I will get back to all of you on who who convinced me. Thank you. And I've, I've had to examine each of your cases very thoroughly to see who can convince me because, as we know, I am the most based when it comes to MCC takes. So, obviously, seeking my approval is a, is a good step in that. So, X, let's start with you. You tried to convince me about Pete and the Orange team, and unfortunately, I've got to say, Pete's a bit tired. I think, I think he's a bit done. He's past his prime. And yeah, as I said, he's just a bit tired, much like that case of yours. So, unfortunately, you did not convince me today. Ah, uh, next up, mystery. You gotta admit, you had a very up and down roller coaster of a case there. You had me laughing because they're a funny team, but then you mentioned CPK, but then you mentioned Rambu, but then you mentioned CPK. And like the most iconic quote in that diss track, not an S tier though, you can't convince me. Which means today's winner is Steinbolf, who was able to convince me with George Not Found and the power of Dream Not Found. My ultimate love for the Red Rabbit's gonna win today. You convinced Lockie, congratulations. Wait, so this means the Red Rabbits are actually gonna win MCC? Yes. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Well, I will gladly take that W. First ever convinced Lockie win. I'm very honored to have that title. Anyway, thank you all for coming out and watching the pre-show. Very much enjoyed having you watch, and we hope you enjoy MCC when it happens.